When I'm not torturing my soul with some kind of new design problem to solve, I like to spend my time rock climbing. Um, now you can do that these days either indoors at a rock climbing gym or outdoors on actual real mountain faces where you're trying to get to more or less the top of the mountain. Uh, now when you go outside, a unique problem presents itself where you have a hard time kind of finding the actual line that you're supposed to climb up to get to the top of the mountain. So outside in the world, there are various rock climbs which have fixed permanent steel pieces of gear drilled into the mountain to allow you, the climber, to clip your own personal protection equipment. But how do you find them? in the wilderness when you don't have any signal on your phone. In the past, the solution was traditionally to use a guidebook or some kind of uh, local guide, an actual person to walk you to the different routes. Um, but today, another alternative exists uh, with the advent of mobile phones, and it's called Mountain Project. And a mountain project is essentially a digital repository of all of the rock climbs that exist in the world outside of gyms, of course. And it has lots of metadata about how to find that climb, um, things about like how hard the climb is, a description that tells you a little more about it, pictures, of course. Ultimately, it helps you decide if you want to do that climb and then, of course, find that climb um, if you want to do it. And it does some other things like giving you some hints to actually get to the top because um, it's often very tricky to get to the top of a mountain from, uh, from the ground. However, this this application is notoriously very difficult to use. There's lots of usability issues. As you can see here, it's just full of just blank text, unstyled text, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but when there's way too much of it, it's hard for me as a user to disambiguate between the noise and the important stuff that I need to be focusing my attention on. So we're gonna take a stab at redesigning mountain projects so that I can go back to climbing and not worry myself with any usability issues on the interfaces that I'm, I'm trying to employ. So here we have, as usual, the style guide for your viewing pleasure. Uh, nothing crazy here again. Um, we're swapping out. I'm going to take the st take a stab at swapping out the font this time to actually like have an, an interesting impact on the aesthetic. And we're using a really versatile Sans font called Work Sans instead of Roboto, which they're using. Um, but yeah, nothing, nothing too crazy here. Um, in terms of the actual redesign, I've got a long list of things I want to do. Um, I'm kind of a little invested in this project because as a climber myself, I know intimately all of the little problems I face when I'm trying to find a good climb for, the, for that day. Um, so I know a lot about this, but in a nutshell, I really just need to determine whether or not I want to climb a particular route or boulder. Boulders are just kind of like small um, climbs you do without any kind of uh, rope protection. And then I want to track my progress as I go, bookmark certain climbs to come back later, chat with other users about a particular climb, get some context, rate climbs, find other similar climbs in the area, and then maybe easily share those climbs with other users uh, if I found a particular banger that I want others to give a shot. So going to be really fun for me to do this because I use this application all the time. Um, but yeah, curious to see what I come up with and uh, yeah. It should look pretty, pretty sweet once we're done here. So I'll check back in in about, I don't know, probably <laughs> two hours when I'm done redesigning this and we'll see what we come up with. See you in a bit. Here you can see I have moved away the original image that I was using for reference because I don't want to lean on it too much. I just want to get the general sections that I think need to be represented in my UI and then kind of rearrange them the way that makes sense for me.
As is usually the case when you're trying to get the user to make a decision, you have to present them with the emotional criteria to make that decision. And for that reason, the image is front and center here. Getting a look at what a route actually looks and potentially feels like is one of the strongest drivers towards actually choosing to climb that route. So of course we've got all the metadata that's essential, like we need to know that stuff, but the image is really what inspires people to make a decision. And there really is a lot of established affordance for when a user sees an image that's representing a piece of data, generally speaking, you can swipe to see more of those images, but it wasn't intuitive from this uh, particular arrangement of UI elements here. So I wanted to put this uh, photos link here to kind of imply to the user that the background is clickable. But as you'll see, I, I later kind of changed them, changed my mind on that altogether. Veterans of the channel here will see that I'm leaning on a common design pattern, the label value pair, um, to display all the metadata here. Uh, if you really want to be familiar with this kind of pattern because it serves you well in almost every UI and especially in mobile UIs where there's not a lot of screen real estate. Sometimes when I'm designing things, I just like to completely flip the script and see what the exact opposite of that UI might look like. So here you can see I briefly changed the UI to have a white background with black text and immediately realized that for an overlay experience like this, it's just not appropriate. A little quick win here, just simply creating an ordered list out of the location text allows users to kind of go step by step through the process of finding the climb instead of having to read a full paragraph. Whenever you have a situation, particularly on mobile screens, where you have to display long amounts of text to the user, if it's not like a blog post where the user is kind of opted into reading that text, you kind of want to give them a way to, to get rid of that text and, and kind of uh, collapse it so that they're, if, in case they're not interested, because there's nothing worse than having to scroll through like three pages of content. So here I'm giving users the option to expand various drawers depending on what kind of information they want about the route, whether they want the general description or the directions or they want to see the comments. It's all by default collapsed and then they can kind of open things as they need.
Throughout the remainder of this redesign, you're going to see me change this single comment component probably another hundred times. And I just want to underscore that this is something that people don't talk about a lot in design. Uh, a big part of design is just trying different things and then realizing that they don't work and then scrapping them and trying something completely different, right? And the process of getting better at design is reducing the number of iterations it takes you. Um, but ultimately, at the end of the day, good design is really just a function of time. You're seeing me look down a lot here, and I just want to underscore that when you're doing mobile design, there is absolutely no substitute for looking at a prototype on your physical device. Um, sometimes font sizes or just spacing will look a little different on physical pixels, and that is really the difference between like really polished design and uh, things that kind of look a little weird on different screen sizes. Since really the primary function of Mountain Project is to help people find new rock climbs and kind of explore different options for climbing in their local area, um, it just kind of seems silly that the primary part of the of the navigation wasn't directly correlated to actually navigating climbing areas. So here I'm realizing that and I'm kind of just adding it into eventually the header as you'll see here uh, so that users can find climbs that are relevant for them um, regardless of where they are in the app. Here I really want to find a way to fix these buttons to the screen so that when the user scrolls they can still interact with them because I kind of know as a user I, I'm ready to interact with any of these buttons oftentimes regardless of where I am scrolled on the page. Uh, but then I took a, a step back and just kind of realized like once there's an established location for these controls users can just come back to them whenever they want. So as long as they're not impacting anything else on the screen or forcing us to move things around and into a way that doesn't make sense for the information architecture, um, we can kind of just float them wherever we want. So here I'm playing with the idea of putting them on the right hand side and just kind of fixing them there next to the climb image so that users can perform an action as soon as they land on this page or any point after.
And then since I made some pretty significant tweaks to the navigation, I wanted to also display a modal to kind of showcase how I would handle navigation for an app like this. Um, generally speaking, if you have a very kind of robust and involved selection interface, you really want to do it on a separate screen or a very involved modal on mobile. So it should take up like at least a quarter of the screen and kind of exist in its own context. So you're you're seeing me play, play around with that now and kind of uh, getting a feel for how this could potentially look if it was actually implemented. And then finally, going back to that principle of allowing users to selectively choose what they want to interact with, I didn't want to have this comment section available immediately um, because most of the time people just want to read the comments. So hiding it behind a separate call to action made sense. All right, definitely one of my most complicated and long drawn out, totally over-engineered redesigns. Right now I'm at about two and a half hours of recording here. And uh, I think we've kind of came to a, a UI here that really makes sense. And uh, given that I'm a climber myself, I'm kind of able to sample the UI as I kind of uh, design it, which gives me a bit of an edge here. Um, but I think this uh, something like this would uh, be ultimately much more effective. You know, we've got all of the information that we need in the right place prioritized based on what I look at first and, and kind of the most important information all of the relevant metadata is just right here uh, the visual nature of the climb is present to me immediately um, I have the controls which are immediately available to me here um, I'm not gonna miss this right and then I can just kind of gauge whether or not I, I need to like I would like to do this climb here and then users can you know swipe between uh, different climbs on the same area and then switch between areas at different locations uh, using the the little toggle or excuse me the, the navigation controls up here um, so all things considered yeah I think this is uh, I think this is a, a significant step forward <laughs> although it would be quite quite uh, harder to build this um, from an engineering perspective but yeah let me know what you think guys uh, relative to the initial experience or if there's any one of you that's uh, a climber out there I'd love to know is this uh, a mountain project that you'd like to use is this is an app that you'd like to use to help find interesting climbs out there in the world um, yeah let me know what you think and as always if you have some other crap UI that you want me to redesign leave it in the comments and I'll get to it as soon as I can but until next week folks have a lovely week bye